What up guys, this is Calvin Wick back here on YouTube. And it's been a long time since I've done a Hot Toys unboxing and review. Um, Hot Toys has had a lot of delays and now it seems like they're revving it up before the Chinese holiday, bringing out a lot of figures. I've already got one here and another one coming next week. So they're revving it up and it's every week, pretty much they're coming by like two, one to two figures. So it's getting hectic. And also Toys Wonderland has been stepping it up. They've been through a lot of controversy and now there seems like they're getting things rolling. So right now, Sideshow, Toys Wonderland, and there are a lot of studios coming up to the pike for the distribution of these hot toys. And we got some newcomers with J&D and Inart revving it up. It's going to be heated up with these hot toys this year. So like I said, it's been a long time since I've done a hot toys unboxing. And the first one and the first unboxing that we're doing right now is this one. Padme from Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. I really love this figure. I love it. Almost everything about her is perfect. But there is one concern. And I'm really concerned about this from Hot Toys and how they proceed in the future with this. This right here is almost perfect, but I'm gonna discuss in this video, in this unboxing review about the one concern and the one really caveat about this figure that has me worried. And I'm hoping they, uh, Hot Toys makes an adjustment and I hope this video helps you inform you about this concern. And let's get into it, let's get into it with the review of at Pat May Amidala from Star Wars Episode Two, Attack of the Clones. Let's get into it. Okay guys, here it is. Been a long time, long time since I've done a Hot Toy unboxing. And I got Padme Amidala from Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones. This is the front of the box here. And um, just a basic, pretty much basic. Got the front of uh, uh, Natalie Portman's uh, Padme here. So um, this is the front of the box and let's get, let's get to it. Let's get to the other sides of the boxes and stuff and take a look at Padme. Been a long time and uh, don't forget, like, share, subscribe and follow my channel for uh, more content here on my YouTube. But here we go, let's look at the other sides of the box of Padme Amidala, And then we'll get to the figure and all its pieces and stuff. <laughs> Okay, let's start with all the pieces to the Pat May figure. Here we have the stand, which replicates the droid factory in the episode two, Attack of the Clones. Got the Star Wars logo with the Pat May Amidala. We got the uh, crotch stand here. It is white to match with her thing, or her, well, match with her suit, put it right there. Pretty nice. And these are the little parts that display like the droid factory thing that you would put right here, something like here with the stand and stuff. Then we got the cloth and the magnetic cloth. Well, not the magnetic, I think this is the magnetic. And it goes on her head, around her shoulder thing to put the scarf in. And this is her headdress for her head. Just like you see in Attack of the Clones, we got a instruction manual. And this is very important. You need to look at this. It's very important that you go through this because it's, we're going to talk about it too because the instruction manual does not talk about the, the, the issue I'm going to bring in later on. But right here, instructions, please be care, be go through this. This is You're going to have to deal with this figure differently than 
especially with the head sculpt with the movable eyes, you'll have to do differently. And I'm gonna go through detail with that. But that is the instruction manual. We have her blaster. Nice. It's her blaster. Is that right here? And the hand pistol, the famous hand pistol with the retractable that comes out like that. The famous pistol of Padme. Goes right back in. And that's to fit in your holster. Take a better look. And really nice detail. And then we got her arrangement of hands. Each hand, we got the pistol. This is for the pistol. And this one is for the uh, the blaster. Pistol right here, blaster. He has a fist. I really wished, I really wished they would have had another hand for the blaster that she could do a dual wheel, but they didn't do that. So I'm kind of disappointed in that. And then last but not least, this is to her, how you move her eyes. This is what you use to move the eyes to do different looks. And like I said before, uh, that's what I love. One thing about Hot Toys with the eye thing, we'll get to that when we do details with the head sculpt, but I'll tell you why I like the uh, movable eyes. But that is all the pieces to Attack of the Clones to straighten this out. Um, and now, let's get to the figure. Let's take a look. And here she is. And oh my God, this figure is absolute perfection. The posability, which we're going to get into, is top notch. It is, they are really getting better with the posability. We're going to take a look at the improvements they've done with the posability of this figure. Let's start with the arms. The arms. Right here. Right here. All the way up to here. Posability. The arms go all the way up, all the way up here. All the way back this way. That's the arms. Both sides of the arms can do this. All the way back this way. The posability is fantastic. With this material, you still have to be careful, but it leaves a lot of room. It leaves a lot of room. That's the arms. Hand mobility is the same. The legs, boom, boom, right? Oh my God, man, it is posability right there. Be careful of this. It's almost it's just crazy. That's the leg posability. That's both legs. And then we take go down into the head. Get the camera rotated. That's the head movement. The neck is stiff, but it has a ball joint in there, which, like I said, it's pretty good. I know my focus is out because I'm at the table. I'm going to sit her down. I'm going to sit her down. And then, boom, like this. So my focus is a little bit off. But it does that, but there's a caveat to this. And we're going to get to it. The posability is good. The neck doesn't move, which is fine, but the head moves. This comes off the back of the head. That comes off. So you can fit the uh, head scarf on there. You'll take that off, put in... Her, her scarf and her head thing. That's the movement. Look at that. That head sculpt is pure perfection. It looks exactly like Natalie Portman. That's crazy. 
This is a great figure. This is by far the best figure in my collection. By far. Posability wise is on par with other figures. It's on par with uh, Sylvie from Marvel's Loki. It's on par with Sylvie. There you guys straighten out. It's it's on par with Sylvie. Only it's the only thing about it. It's one thing. And we're gonna get to that. There's only one thing wrong. Everything else is perfect. Look, you can do so many poses with her. Let's take a look at the feet. One more thing, the feet. The feet have some good rotation. And you can do some wiggle with here. So the feet. Only thing, it doesn't have a movable toe, so you can do position. So it's going to be hard to do certain stances with her. But it's, that's the only little thing I can, I can say. And the torso, forgot, torso movability. Torso movability. We're going to push back for some. It has a little twist here, a little twist there. You got to be careful up. Down torso movability, push it back a little bit. Yeah, my camera focus is messed up for some reason. Torso movability is pretty good, so you have a little flexibility in the torso. Posability wise, because the feet don't have not every figure has this, because of the feet, it'll be hard to do certain poses, but everything else is movable. Everything else. It's movable. Like, you could get some good poses out of it. Her feet stand firm, though. That's another thing. You stand firm. And you can pretty much get a firm stance. So you can get basic, like, uh, prone stances off of this. The, the figure is amazing with life likeness. Her, her, her style. Like, it, it, look at that. Look at the beauty. Just look at the. Like, that's insane how good they got this figure. It's insane. Hot Toys is competing within art heavily. They're competing, dude. They're, they're stepping their game up heavily. It looks just exactly like Natalie Portman. But now that we've got all that through, um, I'm going to give you, like, the, the rating... This is a 9 out of 10. And the only way it's not a perfect 10 is because of what I'm going to show you later. And after this, right after this, I'm going to show you. But it's a 9 out of 10. Posability, likeness. Um, be careful with this white cloth, though. Don't be eating or drinking anything. You're going to have because you're not going to be able to wash this out because it doesn't come off. This cloth does not come off. It's all the way on her. So you have to be careful. Please don't eat eating any peanut butter and jelly. When you're around this figure, make sure you just finish your food, wash your hand, wash your hands. Because if whatever gets on this white, you are going to have a hell of a hard time getting it off because you cannot remove this suit. So it is perfect white. If it gets dirty, it gets dirty and you're going to have a hard time. So please eat, eat, just finish your food, wash your hands. Clean and dry up and then play with the figure because <laughs> you're not getting nothing off of this. <laughs> but other than that, man, it is perfection. Simply perfection. And now, the one thing that keeps it from getting a 10, the only thing that keeps it from getting the 10 is the head sculpt. And before we do that, I'm going to show one more thing. Here's the holster where you put the gun, her weight band. You could actually take this off, but that right there in her pouches, good material. The material is really good. It looks like this white material is very thick and rich. So it's very strong material. So you can have some good posability off of it. So, but now let's get on to the, what keeps it from getting the perfect 10. Cause it was this close to getting a perfect 10. Only one thing. And we're going to get into that. 
Nine out of 10. Hot Toys is close. They are trying their best to compete because the competition is fierce. Inart and now JND is running in the game. And Hot Toys is revving it up. Here's the caveat and the only bad thing about this figure. Let's get into it because this is going to be a conversation. Okay, here we go. Here's the caveat of the figure. I'm going to make an example of what we're talking about here. It is a big problem. The head sculpt is the most important part of your figure. The head sculpt is perfect. The movable eyes is perfect. But here is where we get into a problem. This is how you're going to have to take this thing off slowly and wiggle. And it's going to get hard. As you can see, I'm struggling to get it off because of the design. You got to wiggle it. Boom. And now it's off. This is how you're going to have to take this head sculpt for this figure. This is the problem. This. As you see, it rolls on here. Turn it. This thing and this thing is the problem. This is the problem. As a... I don't agree with this. If you look right here, there's the roll. There's this roll here. This little thing right here is a little crack right here. If you bend this the wrong way, this thing is breaking. There's no, there's no question. You have to ease to take this out. This is gonna break, cause it's, cause it's right here. Cause it for this to roll, this might break. This I don't agree with at all. This is new. This is a big problem. It's way too difficult and way risky. Hence the fact, and here is where you control the eyes. You, you put this in here, move the eyes. No real problem here. No real problem here. But when you, I've had my friend, best guard kid, says that when he moves the eyes, puts it on, it moves them. That's another problem. This is just, this is a no-go. I, in my opinion, is a no-go. It is, you can break it because of its design right here when you're trying to pull it out. So if you push it this way, it's going to snap. If you do it too hard, you have to ease this out. So it's very, things that you have to do with this figure. And here's an example of what I'm talking about, the differences between this and other head sculpts. I'm gonna show you a difference here. Here is uh, one of my figures. This is a uh, Fiddick Shan. This is the head sculpt. Here, I take it off. Look at that, just easy, pops right off. See how you said it pops right off? And then you have this ball joint right here. This is not gonna break because it, the, the ease of access of that ball. Even though it has the same concept it is literally the same thing right here but it put this on here this makes it way too hard and i figured why they did this it's not as easy to break because it pops on and pops right off so you don't have to worry about twisting here we put the head scope in pops right on it's very firm right off very easy i think the reason why they did this is because of the movable eyes. Because you, this is probably why they did this. I'm just not certain about this. Just not certain about this. This is a new way so they don't take the eyes off. So they can have the movable eyes with this figure because of her head. Almost, here is another example. But like I said, this is just very concerning. Because this is firmly on here. And it's on there for a reason. Because of this to pull that out. And it snaps on this right here. It's just, it's tight on there, guys. It's tight. Because they did this for movable eyes. And here's another, here's another real example of this. Here's another example. This is Ahsoka from The Mandalorian. 
Sokotan from Mandalorian. She has movable eyes. Same thing here. Pops right off. Right there is the head thing with the ball. And it's more firm. This one is a straight ball with no rotator. And it's more firm on there. Just like this. And then this has a movable neck. So it comes on here. This is a lot safer. And you move the neck using the head here. The reason why she has movable eyes. The reason why they went for this is because to move her eyes, all you have to do is remove this. They made it like this with the magnet to remove. And then that's where you get access to the eyes to move. It's because of this, her head, the way her head is built. So with Padme, that's different because she has a full head or her hair is there. So there's really nothing you could do to, to, to disguise this because if you do a removable eye thing, removable head to get to where you can move the eyes, you might take away the illusion of, perf of her head. This, it doesn't because it clicks on there. And when it clicks on there, it covers everything up. So, you know, you couldn't tell that there's a separation there until you take it off. And I believe that's why they did this with Padme. Because Padme has a full human head. It's for the movable eyes. That's this is the same for that Ahsoka right there. It does the same thing this one does. You take that off of there to move her eyes. Because of her headpiece, it makes it easy. Alita, another thing, Alita right over there, you can take her head off, her hair off. Because her hair is in a full, long hair. It's draping all the way down. So when you put it on, you can't tell that you can remove that until you take it off. Because her hair, that's Alita right there behind Ahsoka, the other Ahsoka from Clone Wars. You can remove all that head off because her hair goes all the way down, covering her ears and everything. So that's why her head scope is different. You could pop her head off the same way. This one with Padme, her hair is tied in a bun. And here's her ears showing everything. So that's probably why they have it designed like this. Because in order to have the movable eyes, which is a, which is a very pro for me. I love movable eyes. That's the one thing. That way, if you want movable eyes, you can have that. But you have to, they had to make this design in order to make that movable eye possible for Padme. In order to make that possible, they had to go with this type of design so she could have her head like that. Other figures you could do different things with because Alita has long hair. Ahsoka has this head thing. So you can do that ball design like this. And you could just do other things like open this up to move the eyes. So that's why that design. This is a very risky design, which it has a possibility of breaking. It has caveats to it. This is the only thing why. And I believe why is because the way her head is designed, the way her hair is. That's why they did it. This is the only reason. That's the only logical thing they could come up with. As hence here, she has no movable eyes, but her eyes look straight forward, straight at you. So you could just move her head, but she doesn't have movable eyes. So they could just pop it all, pop it off. And if that's the case, I do hope that they do this. That they each time for each different situation, they have a different method. So if they don't have movable eyes, they just go with the same ball point right here. Pop on, pop off. With Ahsoka, the head pops it on the top part onto the neck. And you can just remove this to move the eyes. Fantastic idea. I think it's great. If they do it like this, I hope the Ahsoka, the white figure, does the same thing. Um, You're going to run into problems with more human-like people. If you want to have movable eyes, when you have something that's human like that, if their hair is not draping all the way down and their hair is tied in a bun like this, in a bun, which is a bun, you'll have to do something like this. It, or if you want movable eyes, if you want movable eyes, you'll have to do something like this. Let's turn the light down a little bit. 
You'll have to do something like this, which will run a lot of risk. That's probably why. So that's why I think they ran into a problem where, hey, if you want movable eyes, we have to do something like this for somebody like Padme. So that's the thing. That's the caveat to it. That, and that's one of the different agreements with, with it. Like when it comes to head scopes, when it comes to the eyes, the thing that I like, one, movable eyes. I do. And I, I will take the, the head off to move her eyes around to have her look in different directions. Movable eyes is a plus for me. If they do not have movable eyes, I would rather they have their eyes facing forward, looking straight at you, facing forward like this, not looking to the side, not permanently fixed to one side, just looking straight at you. It makes posability better because you can just move the face to point in the direction to have her look in the direction you want. So if, if it's not going to be movable eyes like this, where you can move the eyes to have her look in certain directions, if they make it stationary, Facing forward, looking straight at is the preferred thing. That's my preference because it, it makes better for posability. So like the gold armor Wonder Woman, she's looking this way. She's looking looking to her to her uh left, my right. But but it's permanent there. It's not movable eyes. So I have to it's hard to have her do poses because she's always looking that direction. That's what I don't like. If it's going to be permanent, let her look in face and forward. If it's, or movable, movable eyes, great, fantastic. Movable eyes are a great thing. And I, and, uh, Hot Toys is trying to implement that. That is why they're doing things like this and in innovation. So I give it a plus. It's innovation. So you can have every figure do movable eyes. So it's an innovation. I give Hot Toys props for that. But I hope that they don't stick with one thing like this. If uh, you have a toy like Ahsoka, where you can get away with just doing something like this and still keeping the more safe ball popping joint, I would want them to do that. Same with Alita. If she has a full head of hair and you can do it where you just take the hair off and pop it off and get to the eyes that way, great. So... You might have sometimes if you want movable eyes that where they'll have to do something like this because it's no choice because of the head. So you might have some of this do. I hope they find a different method, but this looks like the more optimal thing. It's risky. It looks like it's more likelihood to break. So that's the caveat I have to say. I know it was a long one, but I had to go in real detail of uh, why. I had a little concerns about this and it's a good thing and a bad thing because the good thing is to have movable eyes, they're doing innovation. The bad thing is this runs a little risk depending on the figure with things like Ahsoka. You're not going to have a risk like that because they, they can just take the head thing off and you can move the eyes from there and pop it back in. It's safer. But with Padme, who's more human and her has her hair tied up in a bun, you have to do some more innovation, which runs risk and no risk. So Hot Toys is stepping it up. I don't hold it against them. I just have concerns. But remember, you're going to have to be very slow and very careful with this. Popping it back in is not going to be much of a problem. You know, boom, clicks back in. Taking it off is going to be your major problem. So... That's it for the caveat that I had with the head sculpt and how it goes in it off of the neck. That's it. That's it. Um, let's go for my final review and a little bit, just a little bit more toss. It's going to be a longer video because I had to talk about the head sculpt thing. Let's go for a final review and just a recap. And that is it for Padme, one six scale figure. Star Wars Attack of the Clone, Episode 2, by Hot Toys. Um, 9 out of 10, fantastic figure. Um, perfect head sculpt. Um, just one thing is that it's going to be difficult to remove the head because of the pieces and the way it's attached, attached to the neck. Um, rolling eye capability. 
great. Um, flawless from head to toe. Um, this is a great figure. Other than that caveat, there's nothing I can say is bad. Um, like I said, be careful with the head sculpt. Um, next up, Valkyrie, which will be next week. Um, she's coming in. I got a Catwoman and the Batman coming in. Um, these will be from Sideshow, so it'll be a longer wait. Valkyrie is coming in from Toys Wonderland. So the, the Batman and the Catwoman are going to be a longer wait because um, they're through Sideshow. And I decided to, you know, stay with Sideshow because Toys Wonderland was messing up. And now things are rolling. Um, still, Toys Wonderland still has some things they got to improve. But it looks like things are rolling. Um, the reason why I got it from Toys Wonderland, the Valkyrie coming in, is because I got a refund with, for a lot of money. And I used it just to purchase Valkyrie. And then I got a contact saying it's coming. So next week, it looks like it'll be Valkyrie. But like I said, um, Hot Toys is making the improvements and the adjustments. So this is a great figure. Just look at it, how I have it posed right here. Her facial expression is just beyond belief. Like I said, it's been a long time since I did a Hot Toys review and I decided to do this one. Just came in, so um, stay tuned for the next unboxing. And uh, I might have other things going on with YouTube. Now I'm doing uh, a lot on TikTok. I've been on TikTok and I'm doing a lot of stuff on TikTok. So um, like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel um, for other more updates and more videos that are coming. And I have a TikTok. It's Calvin Wick. On TikTok, um, come on there. I'm doing a lot of gaming stuff, fighting game related stuff. Um, just had an Evo announcement, so some things coming up there. And um, like I said, um, it's really getting deep. So I'm gonna try. As, uh, well, I'm gonna am gonna do the uh, do the um, Valkyrie unboxing. So. But now that we've got all this today, the only thing left now on this video is the poses. And I got a few poses with Padme here. Um, she is a very lovable figure. Um, Natalie Portman is a beautiful woman. <laughs> and this only excites me for when Thor Love and Thunder's Jane Foster, also portrayed by Natalie Portman, that hot toy is coming soon. And I can't wait now to get my hands on that hot toy to see how they do the head sculpt with Natalie Portman as Jane Foster, which also has rolling eyes. She has movable eyes. So I wonder what they're going to do with that one. Are they going to do like they did with this one with the, with the, the detachable head, or are they going to do something different? Because this Natalie Portman has two heads. It has the Thor head and she has the head, but this time her hair is long. She has long hair. So I'm really curious of how they're going to approach that figure with Natalie Portman's face and lightless likeness for Jane Foster in Thor Love and Thunder. So I can't wait for that. So that's up next. So now that we're done with the review and stuff, nine out of 10, um, let's get to the poses. We're going to have a, quite a few poses. So if you enjoy this um, unboxing stuff and enjoy the link. Um, we're going to go into poses and enjoy some of these poses I have with uh, Natalie Portman's portrayal of Padme in Star Wars Episode 2 of Cack of the Clone. So here we go. And hey, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think and how you feel about this, uh, the different way they did the uh, detachment of the head scope and uh, until next time enjoy these poses mon monologue montage enjoy the pose montage